of trying to either knock their way through or at least pull down that barbed wire fence. The fence is huge. It straddles an area of about 40 kilometers from start to finish, although at either end of that fence, there are other measures in place to stop those migrants trying to get across. Afghan migrants, they've been told they will not be allowed to cross. Syrians and Iraqis, they will be allowed to cross, but they have to be processed accordingly. You can see there how the authorities on the Greek side of the border have put in those uh, levers made of what looks like improvised metal poles that they've managed uh, to get from some place. From its northern frontier with Macedonia to the port of Piraeus, all the way down in the south, Greece has been inundated with refugees and migrants after the borders were shut down, people trying to cascade their way through the Balkans. There are at least, we're told, 20,000 people stranded in Macedonia, presumably all very close to or heading for the border. Uh, Idomeni is a, a small community on the border of Macedonia. Uh, hundreds of families walking towards the frontier. Those reports still coming through. One estimate saying there are 3,000 people more at a makeshift camp a little bit further back down the so-called Balkan route. We have teams on the ground in Idomeni and in Athens, and we will here on the news hour on Al Jazeera continue to monitor that situation for you. We'll be back with the headlines and we'll recap all the top stories for you in just a moment. Do stay with us here on Al Jazeera, coming to you live from Doha. You are probably seeing more than me what's happening. All I can tell you is that I am smelling the tear gas from here and from what I can see, uh, more is being firing as we speak. There are several explosions, several pops that I can hear in the background. It was obvious up until, what, 35 minutes ago that the authorities had been told to treat this with kid gloves, that the mindset on the part of the authorities had been gently, gently, but somebody further up the chain of command, it would appear, has taken the decision and they are saying, look, the border has to stay closed, therefore we will up the ante, we will use tear gas, we will fortify this border crossing. Yes, absolutely. Now, I don't know if this tear gas is being fired uh, by the Greek riot police, which is on this side of the border. Actually, I'm told no, or by the, re the, the forces that are on the other side of the border. Now, you have to understand that over the, on the other side of the border, there's the Macedonian uh, forces, but there are also Hungarians, Czech, uh, and uh, other forces that are here, other Balkan forces that have been deployed to reinforce this 40 kilometer uh, long fence. Uh, they have been there and we have been seeing them throughout the days that we've been driving along this border. It, it's been quite difficult for anyone uh, to get close to their border. They you are immediately spotting. They patrol it day and night uh, to make sure that actually smugglers don't get through or refugees don't try to sneak in. Uh, so it is, from what we understand here, uh, that it's on the other side that all of that is happening with tear gas being fired from the Macedonian side onto the refugees in, uh, on the Greek side of the border. In, over the past few days, the Greek riot police were standing there even when they were holding, having the sit in here. Uh, they were standing, they were cordoning off the area, making sure that no one would be allowed actually past that group of people that you see. After that, over the past few days, no one was allowed on the other side. But that situation today has completely changed. And from the amount of Greek police I've seen here, they are probably overwhelmed by the situation. Now it has gone out of control, even though uh, many people are also, maybe if Shireen can pan to the camera, the camera, many people, as you see, are walking back, especially the families with the children. Just 20 minutes ago, they were running on the gravel. We see, we've seen children trying to catch up with their parents, falling on the gravel. It was a state of, I would say, panic and hope that 
finally maybe those uh, gates towards Western Europe will be open and I think probably most of these people walking back now are in, in a state of huge disappointment uh, maybe even much the, their morale going much lower than what it was an hour ago uh, this is a certainly a r emotional roller coaster for these refugees and migrants uh, uh, that are stranded here we've also I'm looking this way on the tracks but we also see people who are walking towards this area because you have other refugees and migrants who are further down, uh, uh, sleeping in the woods uh, a, a few kilometers away. And just to give you an idea about how the rumor spread all the way to there that the, that the borders uh, will be open. We saw some people that we had met uh, just yesterday who were in those woods. Well, they were here today just because they heard that rumor and they ran as quickly as they can with their sleeping bags, with their backpacks. And probably now they will be also very much disappointed uh, because they won't be able to go through. Hoda, as far as the, the logistics of that border fence are concerned, is it just one fence with razor wires? I mean, when the people managed to get through, you were saying there a handful of people did manage to